Hello and welcome back to Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. Let's start this quest with Datison. Good you're here, Kiryu. Ready? Round trip to Kamarocho and back. Have everything you need? Let's go. Yeah, let's go. Straight over to Stardust. Kazuki and Yuya are both working there today. Hope you're prepared for this. We're giving that bucket list some weight to it. And there it is, Kamarocho's prevailing host club, Stardust. Prevailing, huh? <laughs> They've come a long way, I suppose. Obviously, the Jing'an occupation brought some drastic changes a while back. Now it's returned to its more traditional roots, so to speak. That Kazuki boy's always had a vision. You're not kidding. That's not just traditional. It's downright nostalgic. Huh? Ah, uh, you, yeah. Huh. Honestly, things never change. Right in the middle of the street. Like I give a shit who you're with. The Tojo clan couldn't even get protection money from us. Get out of here. Don't come back again. You're freaking dead! We're gonna ruin this joint! But the best you got for me? Real Kamurocho natives sneeze better threats. Let me teach you. Never screw with the big boys. Nicely done, Yuya. You're as fearless as the day I met you. Kazuki-san. <laughs> I'll cover the outside. You worry about business on the inside. You know how boring it is without you in there? Come. There's always more to do. On it. Seems as popular as ever, huh? I suppose so. I appreciate you helping me get one last look at them. Let's slow down. Hey, that was the owner just now, right? Hell of a show. Hmm? Oh, yeah, wasn't it? <laughs> Those crooks were looking for protection money? Amazing how you all beat them back. And by the looks of it, business is booming for you boys. Suppose so. We're uh, pretty old-fashioned as host clubs go. Our competitors like to say we're behind the times. But Kazuki-san's a great boss, and with him in charge again, we're all eager to work here. The fact that he still pulls in such young fans is especially motivating. Us <laughs> young bloods have to keep up. <laughs> I'm glad to see people still admire Kazuki and Yuya. That'll never change. They've always been a different breed. And Kamurocho fixtures for decades. Most people have forgotten by now that the Jingon Mafia took this place some time ago. They had money, weapons, people. Things got really rough for a bit. Hmm. The Jingon used Stardust to launch their Kamurocho expansion. It was a smart play. Oh, mister, you know your stuff. Have you heard the entire history behind it all? Hmm? As to why the Jingon was targeting Kamurocho in the first place, I mean. You see, the Korean Mafia was beaten, badly, by Tojo Clan Yakuza back in the 80s. Meaning, no offense, you two look like you might have been around back then. Do you know about the Dragon of Dojima? <laughs> yep, I've heard the name before, at least. <laughs> I figured. No one who knows anything about Kamurocho wouldn't know Kazuma Kiryu, after all. Yeah, Kiryu-san was a legend who kicked the Jingon out almost single-handedly. Kazuki-san and Yuya, though, had the misfortune of being his friends. 
So, when the Jingon Mafia finally came back, they went straight for Stardust and Retribution. You could say, Kazuki-san was just another victim of Kazuma Kiryu's legacy of violence. Huh. Not exactly sure that's accurate. You know? Don't you think? I gotta say, this city's story has always been about honest people paying for the underground sins. At least the Jingon are dead and buried now, anyway. Kiryu-san, too. So I've been told. And with all of them gone, he fell to Kazuki-san to rebuild on his own. It kills me to think of him having to bow his head to every moneylender in town. If those criminals could hear me from hell, especially Kiryu, I'd have some words for him. I see. Fair enough. I'd say you've got a point. Hey! Thanks for your time. Hope we didn't bother you. No, of course not. No bother at all, sirs. Hey, where are you going? This isn't what we came for. Kazuki and Yuya are coming to Serena in a little while. Don't tell me you invited them there. Hm. I'm not saying you have to reveal yourself. It's just a chance to hear them, see how they're really doing. No. I saw for myself they're doing well. And I've heard enough. Oh, come on, don't say that. I promise you, whatever that toddler of a host said, Kazuki and Yuya don't agree with him. I've never heard them utter one word of resentment. Even still, I... Honestly, just come upstairs. What's a Kamarocho trip without revisiting this place anyway? Think of it as part of the tour. Ah, there you are. Good to see you, Kazuki. Yuya. Likewise. Thank you for inviting us. Not every day the legendary detective of Kamurocho asks you out for drinks. Hmm. Is that the kind of barefaced flattery Stardust customers get treated to, Yuya? That wasn't flattery. Everyone knows I speak my mind, pure and simple. All right, all right. Hey, by the way, this place is empty. You didn't, like, reserve the whole bar for us, did you? Not at all. This is the slow time of night. Always clears out around now. Come on, Yuya. Don't be presumptuous. Okay, gazuki san but I bet you were thinking the same thing. Here it is. Trying to clear your name by muddying mine. I apologize for that, Date-san. Oh, get this, Date-san. Know what happened earlier? Some small-timers actually came around for protection fees. <laughs> yeah, I saw. Happened to be down the street during the confrontation. Well thought. Uh, don't tell anyone I said that. Technically, I probably should have arrested you. How are you always so up to date? Rolling on Stardust's front door just now? Gotta say, it actually brought back memories. Yeah? Of what sort? Huh. <laughs> Do you have to ask? I'm sure we're all thinking the same thing. Yep. Dead to rights, yeah? <laughs> Come on, don't keep me in suspense. Back in the day, Yuya would hurl Yakuza hither and yon from our doorway. No safer one. Cure you, son. Naturally. I get it now. Of course he'd come to mind. Hard to believe that was almost 20 years ago now. Yeah. Crazy. I can count on one hand the fights I've lost in my life, but I've never felt strength like his before or since. That first night, he looked just like any other mid-rank soldier come to squeeze us. Huh. Little did you know you were picking a fight with the Dragon of Dojima. Time never slows down, huh? Soon, Kiryu-san will have been dead for as long as I knew him when he was alive. Kiryu keeps a bottle on reserve just in case he ever shows up again someday. <laughs> One of our most expensive bottles, in fact. <laughs> Doesn't exactly help our bottom line. Well, Yuya's not alone there. Sometimes I'm stunned he's been gone so long. But everyone in this district who ever met the guy feels that, now and again. Maybe, 
Still, he had a way of bringing trouble wherever he went, wouldn't you say? Stardust must have surely suffered over the years because of him, no? Your doorman has something of a grudge against him, in fact. Can't in good faith deny that, I guess. Talk about someone the world just has it out for. There were times he'd waltz in, and you'd know a storm was coming. I don't know. Do you think Kiryu-san would forgive me if you heard me say that? It's fine. If you're still carrying this with you, might as well let it out. Okay. The thing is, no one ever took the brunt of it worse than Kiryu-san himself. When that man clenched his jaw and furrowed his eyes, all your doubts would disappear. I'll never forget the first time we met. He was ready to overthrow the Tojo clan, all on his own. But then, he found a little girl worth 10 billion yen, and decided to protect her like she was his own blood. After that, Kiryu-san became an icon to this city. Anyone who knew him knew the courage he could instill. Every twist and turn, all our troubles and hard times felt bearable then. Yeah, that's what Kiryu-san was to us. That's why it's so hard to believe he's gone for good. Hey, Date-san. Hmm? Why tonight? Why invite both of us here all of a sudden? Did anything happen recently? What do you mean? Hmm, I wonder. News of Kiryu-san, perhaps? A sighting, a rumor, a word? Some sliver of evidence somehow suggesting that his death was... a faint? Uh, don't do this to yourselves. I'm sorry, but I called you because I felt like seeing some old friends. I see. And that's all it is? Ah, come on. Can you blame us for hoping for something more? <sighs> <sighs> you too. Kazuki-san likes to say that Kiryu-san deserves to have us honor his legacy. That's why Stardust was worth all the scraping and clawing it took to get it back. Yeah, that must have been difficult. But from the looks of it, Stardust has truly recovered. Kamarocho itself, even. Like the city's healing from Tenkaichi Street out. For the first time in a long time, I think I'd be proud for him to visit us again. I'd like him to know that we're still standing. I suppose I understand Yuya in his bottle now. It's all right. I have a feeling he's damn proud of the both of you. Believe me, there's not a doubt in my mind. I should apologize for dragging you all the way up there. I know you're busy. You don't have to do that. I appreciate all the work it took. Kazuki and Yuya, well, feel free to tell me I was right. Those two have always looked up to you. Maybe Kamarocho can become a little bit better if its people don't forget the man who fought for it. How was it hearing all that? It was good. I felt happy. Like listening in on your own funeral, though. <laughs> yeah, that's understandable, I suppose. Although, what better way to find perspective on the life you've led than that? No one expects they're the poor bastard everyone will say good riddance over. Except maybe you. You think you only ever put people in danger. I'm gonna prove to you you're wrong. I'm working on another clandestine reunion. Stay in touch until then. Thanks for the drink. See you again soon. <sighs> Good night, Kiryu. Do your best to hold on to what they said. Alrighty.
Let's start with Psycho, actually, because her outfit is trash. Hey there, Kiryu-san. Are you here for a drink? You, uh, sure that'll be okay? No need to worry about me. <laughs> oh, please. But, since you're already here, there just so happens to be a seat right next to me. Great. I'll take you up on that. So, Psycho, you're a mama over at a cabaret club? I'm not just a mama. I'm the owner of the whole joint. After the previous owner passed away, one thing led to another, and I ended up taking over. The younger girls are usually the ones serving the customers, but sometimes I lend them a hand, too. <laughs> Guess I should be paying you for this conversation, then. Mm-hmm. Cough it up, mister. But I guess you did help us out before, Kiryu-san, so... <laughs> Let's just call it even. I won't be taking any money from you. Oh, whoops. I should be calling you Suzuki-san instead, right? You can use my real name around friends. It'd make me happy if you could call me by my real name around our friends. There aren't any enemies here anyway. Sounds good. That's easier for me, too. Well, I can't speak for the rest of our motley crew, but I'll just call you Kiryu-san. You know, you give off this air of sophistication, even when you're sipping a drink. You look like such a gentleman. Same goes to you. You look like the very picture of elegance, sitting here, drinking alone. <laughs> oh, yeah? <sighs> Maybe working at the club has actually sucked the youth out of me. I'm sure that it takes more than youth and vigor alone to become a successful business owner. Yeah, I guess you're right. Maybe that's why the men who come on to me are starting to change up their pickup lines. Really now? How so? Well, they don't stop at dating. And by that, I mean they start hinting at marriage. Or, you know, things like that. Those are some intense customers. They're not like that at all around the younger girls. But I seem to attract a lot of customers like that. The type of guy who's looking to get hitched. Uh, guess that means I'm at the right age for that. People are starting to look at me that way now. At least that's the sort of vibe I get. Actually, get this. One of the guys hitting on me is pretty rich, and he has a lot going for him. Sounds like you don't mind that at all. Mm, I wouldn't say that. Honestly, I'm not looking to get married. I'm plenty satisfied with how my life is right now. On the other hand, there's my twin sister. I keep thinking she needs to tie the knot with her boyfriend and settle down already. I mean, she's at the perfect age to get married. If she doesn't hurry, she'll let the chance slip by. Something's not adding up here. If she's your twin, wouldn't that make her the same age as you? I know, I know. It's like the pot calling the kettle black. I'm aware I've just been making excuses, trying to justify myself. As long as you know, I won't comment. <laughs> By the way... Hmm? Did Ichiban say anything about me when you guys were in Hawaii? Let me think. But why do you ask? Are you worried about him? Well, not exactly. I just haven't talked to him in a while. <laughs> he did something that pissed me off. And how long is a while? N nah, just leave it. All that matters is that he's doing okay. Besides, this is Ichiban we're talking about. No matter where he goes, I can't imagine him being anything but his stubborn, cheerful self. Here you, son? What's up? Why'd you get all quiet? If you've got something to say to Kasuga, I'll hear you out. I don't mind playing the messenger. Something I want to say to him? <sighs> I, I can't really think of anything, though. But thank you for that. It doesn't have to be right now. Offers valid whenever you want. If there's anything I can do to help, 
Just let me know. Yeah. Of course. What can I say to that? You know, if I keep spending more time with you, Kazuga might get upset. Oh, no, 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 no. We're not like that at all. The two of us are just friends. Sure. Well, let's drink again sometime when we get the chance. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> not at all. I'd love to, in fact. Just make sure your health doesn't get any worse, Kiryu-san. You got it. I look forward to doing this again. Yeah, same here. It's been fun. All right, next one. Hey, Psycho. Mind if I join you for a drink? Yeah, go ahead. I've been saving this seat just for you, Kiryu-san. Gotta keep an eye on the sickly, you know. Make sure he's not drinking too much. That's so. I'm sure he'd appreciate it. Actually, there's something I wanted to ask you. When you're hitting on a woman, are you the attentive type? The, the kind of man who takes care of all of her needs? Hmm. I'd say so, yeah. But not to the point where I'd embarrass myself. Have you ever given someone a bouquet? That's not my style. I've never done that myself, but I think it's actually pretty bold. Okay, but if a guy gave you enough roses to nearly fill your room every single day, that'd be crazy, right? And crazy expensive to boot. Anyone could have do that if they had the money. I don't mean to sound harsh or anything, but anyone could do that if they had the money. Sending her flowers every day doesn't necessarily mean you're making her happy. Yeah, I get what you mean. You make a good point, even if the truth hurts. So what's with the rose talk? Did some guy actually try to woo you with a bouquet or two? <laughs> you're pretty sharp, Kiryu-san. That is spot on. <sighs> You must be quite the character, then. All right, I'm listening. So what kind of guy is he? He's the CEO of some consulting firm that just started up here in Ijincho. He's young, only like a year older than me. After his first visit to the club, he asked me on a date, and I figured it wouldn't hurt to say yes. And ever since then, he's been sending me a ton of roses every day, to my club and to my home. It doesn't really bother me, and I just feel bad if I told him off for it. You shouldn't, though. Was this pretty recent? Yeah, like, since last month. The guy seems head over heels for you. Those flowers can't be cheap, either. And on top of that, he even slips in stuff like marriage and our future whenever we're having a conversation. So this CEO guy is the same customer who was pressing you about getting hitched? Yep. I mean, honestly, he was a great guy on our date, and he does seem to know how to treat a woman. He's attentive, and he never runs out of things to talk about. And he's funny, too. Some girls might even call him perfect. Seems like you don't think too badly of Mr. CEO, either. Huh. Does it come off that way? Oh, yeah. That reminds me. What's up? I heard Ichiban is doing just fine over there. He's uh, hanging around with that one girl, right? Chitose-chan? Uh, oh, yeah, I guess so. So, what's she like? Mm, let's go with this one. Chitose is the daughter of the Fujinomiya family, so you could say that she's pretty unique. That's what I've heard too. Being born into a family like that is already way impressive. At first, I thought she was just a petty thief. Kasuga and I both got played by her. Chitose-chan more or less stripped Ichiban of everything he owned and threw him out, right? Wasn't he being way too careless? <laughs> yeah, you're right. I mean, he went all the way to Hawaii to meet his mom. He should have kept his head on straight. 
But Kasuga wasn't seduced by her. He only got his drink spiked. On top of that, she told him she was Akane-san's housekeeper. I don't think he had much reason to suspect her. Yeah, he let his guard down. But I wouldn't blame him. Uh-huh. So you're taking Ichiban's side, Kiryu-san? <laughs> that man never changes. I'm not sure if it's because he's gullible or what. It's hard to leave him alone, isn't it? Incredibly. <laughs> I know from personal experience. He bears his heart to anyone, so... I'm positive he doesn't look at Chito saying the way you think he does. Does that make you feel any better? What? <laughs> look, if Ichiban's getting friendly with a cute girl over in Hawaii, I'm happy for him. Really. <laughs> uh-huh. Sure. I'll drop the subject then. <laughs> and what are you chuckling at? What's so funny, huh? <sighs> that does it. I'm gonna drink all night long. I don't know if it's just your age talking or what, but that calm attitude of yours just pissed me off. Heck, how would you like it if I stripped you down today, Kiryu-san? <laughs> Careful. I'm a sick man, remember? Have mercy on me. Hey, what are you smirking about? Hey, Psycho. Did you just get here? Yeah, but something's been bugging me. Can't even get a nice buzz. You all right? What's bugging you? Uh, it's that whole dating thing we talked about last time. You know, with that consulting firm CEO? Right, him. Still going on about marriage, I take it. That he is. Guess there's no time to rest for the popular. I don't think he drops by the club for fun, either. He's just there, hitting on me the whole time. He doesn't even glance at the younger girls. Sure, he looks like a womanizer, but at least he's got money. His business seems to be doing well, too. I just don't get why he's so focused on me. Hmm. You think he's got an ulterior motive? Hmm. I've got some money saved up, just like anyone else, but this guy's definitely better off than me. So if it's not about the money, then that means he fell for my beauty, charm, and intellect. Naturally. <laughs> <laughs> Naturally. Knowing all that, I can say this with full confidence. That man is just crazy for you. Well, even so, I'm not really thinking about marriage. My club might be on the small side, but I like being able to run things my way. I've even told him myself that I'm not planning to get married. But he's pressing so hard, it makes me wonder if he's after something, you know? Is it safe to assume that he's probably got some kind of hidden motive? Cause it is a little creepy. <laughs> what happens, I'll protect you. Hey, whatever happens, I'll protect you. Doesn't matter what he's got in mind. He's not harming a single hair on your head. Not with me there. <laughs> no way. You, you don't have to do all that for me, Kiryu-san. Yeah? I can't help it, though. I'm always ready to defend my friends. Well, <laughs> I appreciate the thought, at least. But honestly, it is possible that he just likes me. Go easy on the poor guy. This guy is... well... I told you that he founded a consulting firm, right? But he's also the son of a CEO of another large company. Judging by his background alone, you could say he's set for life. But even though he's wealthy, he tries not to rely on his parents. It seems like he really struggled on his own for a while. You know, it's starting to sound like you admire the guy. It's easy to figure out who's struggled in life once you get a conversation rolling. In that respect, he's not just another rich kid. He can be serious, but he can also let loose and have fun. I think people like him are pretty reliable. Ugh, I've had enough rose bouquets for a lifetime, though. Now this is just something my imagination cooked up. 
But I can see Casca doing his own thing with roses, too. Yeah. <laughs> That's not gonna get him anywhere, though, because he doesn't understand what really matters. Well, at least with him, he wouldn't have to worry about a hidden motive. He'd make it too obvious. He's not such a bad guy. Uh, okay. You know, here you son. Sounds to me like you're trying to talk him up. Let me guess. You heard something, didn't you? Like, oh, I don't know, how Ichiban asked me out on a date? That's when I pissed you off, right? He pissed you off during the date, didn't he? Huh? The other day you told me that you got pissed at him. Because of that, you haven't talked to him in a while. Oh, <laughs> You remembered all that. Sounds like something happened on your date? Yeah, sure was something. He proposed to me on her first date of all things. No kidding. That's a very Kasuga thing to do. But I assume it didn't go well. Considering you're not on speaking terms. It did not, no. Ichiban just kept going on and on about what he wanted us to be when we got married. Obviously shows how much he's thought about it. Yeah, I know he can be a bit awkward when it comes to this kind of stuff. But honestly speaking, that's not exactly what I wanted to hear. But you weren't against a proposal? Well, we've known each other for a long time. I guess Ichiban figured his feelings wouldn't change. Not then, and not in the future. Hmm, so I take it you didn't completely hate the idea. Well... Truth be told, it got my heart fluttering. I'm pretty sure that I was feeling just as nervous as Ichiban was that day. No kidding. Right now, I'm the one getting all worked up listening to this. Yeah, I know, right? Ugh, enough of that. Seriously, how do we always end up talking about Ichiban when we're drinking together? Yeah, I guess we do. <sighs> Let's talk about your love life for a change, Kiryu-san. Anything new with you? I've been a sick, lonely man for a good while now, but... I had my fair share of romance in the past. Oh, yeah? I'm listening. Well, a long time ago. Soon after I was placed in foster care, she arrived. The moment I laid eyes on her, I felt something special between us. In the past, I was innocent, eager. But then... But then? Uh, <clears throat> it'll take me more than a day or two to get through this story. That and, uh, I'm starting to doze off. What? Seriously? That is so not fair. I'll make time to tell you the whole story, once I'm in better shape. Uh-huh, sure. And when will that be? I'm gonna have you schedule that for a later date, then. <laughs> Don't ask for the impossible. Once you get to my age, you never know when you'll be in good shape again. <laughs> Don't give me such a half-assed excuse, then. Complain all you want. I'm not budging. All right. Next one. Looks like Saka's on the phone. I'll wait for her to finish okay, the call. Got it. Don't worry about that. Just let me know straight away from now on. Yeah, thanks. What's up? Is there a problem? Yeah, something came up at the club. I don't want to bore you with the details, Kiryu-san. I've got time. Go on. I've got time. Go on. Talk to me. No need to keep quiet. Should I really be consulting the legendary Yakuza about something this trivial? It sounded pretty important when you were on the phone earlier. Oh, I can't believe you heard that. How embarrassing. 
Guess I've still got a lot to learn as a business owner. So, a problem at the club, was it? That usually means sales aren't up to snuff, or the staff got headhunted. Or sometimes you'll have the Yakuza harassing you, trying to make you cough up protection money. I hear the Seryu clan hasn't been going around doing that lately. Really now? Good to hear. But yeah, one of our business rivals is headhunting our girls. Of course, that's not illegal here in Ijincho. Since the economy's down, everyone's desperate to survive. How many girls did they poach from you? So far, just the one. But it looks like they approached four or five other girls. That's no minor issue. If they all get headhunted, we're done for. I taught these girls everything they know. We won't be able to keep the club running without them. But that's not the worst of it. People are saying I'm trying to close up shop, which only makes it easier to drive these girls away from us. Wait, they're saying what now? Rumor has it that I'm totally on board with marrying that consulting firm CEO. It's true he hasn't been subtle about it, so other people assume I'm happy about the whole thing. That makes the rumor about me shutting down the club seem more plausible. If that's really the case, then no wonder the girls think it'd be better to move to another club. And the cherry on top? Nobody told me about the headhunting right away, because they cared about my happiness. In fact, they finally let me know in that last phone call. Really? And you didn't want to tell me? This is getting out of hand. Honestly, I'm more shocked that my girls kept this from me. Especially because I figured telling them to open up to me would be the best way to keep things casual. By the way, is it just me or is there just too fine a line between caring and being overbearing lately? When you climb up to a higher position, that may create a rift between you and other people. It happens. But something's bugging me about the headhunting. Huh? What about it? Don't you think this could all be a setup? A setup? By who? The CEO. The CEO of the consulting firm who's been pursuing you. It all makes sense. His constant proposals made it easier for the girls to leave the club. You really think so? All the girls at your club were trained by you, so they likely feel a deep sense of gratitude. Normally, they wouldn't be persuaded so easily. They would have reported to you right away, so you could deal with it appropriately. Yeah, that's how it should have gone, but... Mm, too much of a stretch? I've told you before, right? That CEO's loaded, so he's not exactly strapped for cash. Why would someone like that be headhunting hostesses? Uh, that's true. And I don't mean to flatter myself here, but he takes each and every proposal seriously. If this was some kind of marriage scam, I would have seen right through him. Can't argue against that. Oh, sorry. I, I didn't mean to blow up at you. But I'll look into this incident anyway, just in case, to see if he's involved. Sorry if I offended you. And I crossed the line even though I don't know much about running a business. It's fine. <laughs> no offense taken. You're pretty much the only one who'd hear me out on these kinds of things lately, Kiryu-san. I'm glad I could lend you an ear. Feel free to try and bore me all you want. I think I might take you up on that. <laughs> All right, that's the next one. And I think we need one more. Yeah, but is that really true? I I just can't believe it. Gotcha. I guess I was wrong about the whole thing. I'll go check it out myself. Depending on how things go, this could mean war. Looks like something happened with Psycho-san. Yeah, something alarming at that. 
Especially if it means war. If I recall correctly, the two of you have talked about it before. About how her girls being headhunted may have been part of a ploy? That's right. I guess the CEO who's been fawning over her was behind everything. Not so sure about that. It's hard to say, going by that phone call alone. Um, excuse me. Are you Suzuki-san? Thanks for looking out for our mama. Who? You talking to me? Who else would she be talking to? You're the only Tai Chi Suzuki here. Oh yeah, that's right. I already did them to my you mentioned bar. Mama. I'm guessing you're one of Psycho's girls? Yeah, she was just here, right? I came to stop her from rushing into trouble, but she hung up before I could get a word in. So the person Psycho was talking to. Yep, it was me. What's going on? Right. You know that CEO making a move on our mama? Turns out he has connections with the rival club. The rich guy with a consulting firm? Yeah, him. Apparently, he and the manager of the rival club ran in the same circles back in college. Mr. CEO was always looking out for him. Anyway, it sounds like the club manager asked his old pal to keep hounding our mama to keep her from noticing all the headhunting. So Saiko went to give those guys a piece of her mind. That's where you thought she'd be in trouble, right? Yeah, she sounded pretty pissed, so I figured I had to stop her. All right, I'll go check on her then. Do you know where this club is? Oh, yeah, I do, actually. I can't believe you've been wasting my time. So tell me, was everything just a ruse so you could pick apart my whole crew? Well, guess this is the end of the line. <laughs> you caught me. I did help him headhunt for his club, yes. It was a request from an old friend, see? He always comes to me whenever he's in a pinch. Sorry about all this. I'll clean up this mess. It's fine, but Psycho-san, listen. I know you're angry, but I think there's been a little misunderstanding. <laughs> uh-huh. Sure there is. But now that I know what you're after, I can see right through you. You're just a pair of scumbags. Hey! Watch your mouth! My friend here makes millions in a month! And you're just a mama from some cheap-ass club! <laughs> what? You expect me to change my tune just because he's filthy rich? This is between me and him, so buzz off, dumbass! You bitch! <laughs> Guess you didn't need my help after all. That's quite a face you're making, Saiko. Oh. Hey, Kiryu-san. Why are you here? I got word you were pissed at a guy for using you, but... You seem to be keeping a cool head. Well, yeah. I just want them to quit snatching up my girls. Well, that and having them swear never to do that again. Right. So that's why you got yourself a bodyguard. But that makes things easier for us. You know, since I'd rather not lay a hand on a lady and all. Can we not? I didn't come here to deal with you. I don't want to get dragged into this either. At least, wait until I leave? No can do, man. Got to hit him hard and fast to come out on top. The guy's hired by THE Psycho Mukoda. I bet she's got something up her sleeve. This old man's probably gonna put up a good fight. Uh, hold on. I think you've got the wrong idea now. Just FYI, you're messing with the wrong person. I can't tell you his name, but I'm warning you. He's strong enough to be called a legend. <laughs> like I'm falling for that. Come on, boys! Time to shut him up! Get him! Bring it on. Allow me. Here we go. This ought to help. Here we go. There we go. I did say you messed with the wrong guy. 
Wait, please! I really can't fight or anything! This has all been a misunderstanding, Psycho-san! Give it up already, won't you? The manager here asked you to toy with me, didn't he? You think I was in a rush to get married since I'm right at that age? So you played it up thinking I'd bite? Just a second. Why do you insist Psycho's misunderstanding something? Spit it out. I, I admit it. At first, I did try to get close to Psycho-san at my friend's behest. He wanted me to draw your attention. That way he could poach all the girls you've trained yourself. As for me, I thought I could have some fun with a young, beautiful mama who works hard to earn her money with her own club. Ugh, can you hurry up and get to the point already? Because you're just adding fuel to the fire right now. I, I, I apologize. I, just please, just let me say my piece. <sighs> Fine, I'm listening. After dating you, I, I started to fall for you. Your personality and your business philosophy, and that's when I realized if I were to find a partner for life, I can't see myself with anyone but you. What are you saying? Do you truly hate me, Psycho-san? I was kind of hoping I still stood a chance, however slight. I I've got money and the looks, if I do say so myself. My business is doing well, and I love kids. And I fully understand that my personality needs some fixing. Wait, are you seriously trying to propose to her right now? I am. I hadn't been interested in marriage at all, not until recently. Too many women have tried to get close to me, their eyes set on the fortune I've made. But Psycho-san is different from them. Uh... She cared not a whit for my money. She's always brimming with confidence, even when she relies on someone else. You're beautiful and thoughtful. With someone like you at my side, I'm sure I could learn how to support another. In the beginning, I had considered it a ridiculous farce, but now I believe we could create the perfect family together. That doesn't sound like such a bad deal, right? You can even drop your modest little club. I guarantee that my old friend will take good care of your girls at his place. From a business perspective, surely you understand how this would benefit you. What bullshit. Huh? I'm done listening to your stupid long-winded excuse, so now you listen to me. First, run off to that little friend of yours. Tell him not to come near my girls. Ever. If he tries to pull another stunt like that again, He's as good as dead in this town. I'll crush that little club of his and kick you two out of Ijincho myself. But uh, what about my proposal? I'm not done talking. Yes, ma'am. Sorry, but your words didn't get my heart racing. But I admit, it takes balls to propose given your current situation. Maybe that would have worked on some other girl, but not me. But if you keep coming on to me, I will humiliate you so badly, you will never recover from the shame. Oh, God! Don't you ever come looking for me again, if you know what's best for you. It's over. Goodbye. You're a tough one. Guess I didn't need to check on you. Unbelievable! Like, seriously, do I only attract guys like him? They all try to weigh marriage with pros and cons, but I don't see a single goddamn pro from my end. Ugh! Idiots! All of them! This isn't a joke! Sometimes that's just how it is. I'm a businesswoman. I have my priorities sorted, unlike most guys. Agreed. But maybe you ought to slow down. You're drinking too much, too fast. Well, excuse me, but I am pretty depressed right now. Is that how marriage proposals go nowadays? Or, or am I just old-fashioned? Hmm? Old-fashioned how? Well, when I think of marriage... 
I think of a place two lovers end up after affirming their feelings for one another. But that CEO and even Ichiban. Yeah. They both said the same thing, like how they'd make me happy and what sort of dream we could live out together. But there's something more important than all of that. Why didn't he realize that? And he thought he could get away with it after knowing me for so long. Look, maybe this is just my imagination. Uh-huh. The CEO and Kasuga's proposals, they both sounded the same to you, didn't they? I mean, Ichiban's was probably worse, but yeah, they were pretty similar. Especially when it comes to saying what mattered most to me. I figured as much. What makes you say that? I've spent a lot of time with Kasuga in Hawaii. His awkwardness aside, I do admire his passion. And by now, after having a few drinks with you, I can imagine what sort of date you went on and what you guys talked about. I'm sure he was spinning his wheels, trying so hard to convince you. Unfortunately, every point he made to win you over all meant the same thing to you. That there won't be a single con. And that wasn't what you wanted to hear when he was proposing, was it? But you can't bring yourself to tell him that you wanted to hear something else. Because of that, you spent all this time not talking to him. You really think so? <laughs> Actually, maybe you're right. Maybe that's what this is all about. I can't answer that question for you. But I do have one piece of advice. Nobody knows when their life will be over. One day, you might be told your days are numbered. Oh, care you, son. When you're young, you think you have all the time in the world. But the clock's ticking. I don't recommend you end things the way they are. <sighs> That's all I have to say. Thank you, Kiryu-san. No need to thank me. That was just the ravings of an old man. <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> you know, I really loved my grandpa, so you can keep going on about the good old days if you want. Hey now, I was just being modest there. Don't actually treat me like any other old man. <laughs> yes, sir. Anyway, I'll slow down so we can take our time drinking. Come on, how about a toast? To what? Hmm, let's see. To this very moment, to enjoy the rest of our lives to the fullest. Not bad. I'll drink to that. Cheers. Cheers. All right. Now I've finished that. Zach and I have been through a lot these days. Feel like there's special bond there. All right, up for a drink. That's the final one. Here you, son. Thanks for hearing me out so much lately. I really appreciate all the advice. You're constantly there for me, and yet I haven't done anything for you. That's not true. Getting to know you better, fighting side by side, it's all been wonderful. I feel like I've gotten to see the real Psycho. And I've learned a lot from you, too. Though you might be a little stubborn at times. You know, I was going to say that's sweet of you, but then you kept going. <laughs> that's a shame. I'm only kidding. Still, I do want to give back somehow. To that end, I'm around any time you need. Let me know if there's anything I can do. I'll be there to help. Thanks. And yeah, let's keep this up, you and me. I'm sure I'll need advice down the line, so be ready. <laughs> Deal. All right, that finished out. We have a quest here, right? It's good to see you, Suzuki-san. Mm. Thanks. All right if I stop in? No need to ask. You're always welcome here, friend. As long as you call me Suzuki-san, that's who I am, suppose. Mm. 
Sir? Is there something on my face? Uh, no, of course not. I apologize. <laughs> Just a little joke I have. After all, there's always something on my face. Can I ask, have you been in Yokohama a long time? Well, now I haven't kept count. Must be over a decade at this point. Huh. That is quite a while. One more question, sorry. Um, do you happen to have a favorite food? Hmm. Good question. Why do you ask? Cold noodles. Any chance you're uh, partial to them? Guilty as charged. I do fancy a bowl now and again, yes. It's just... I once knew someone who preferred them as well. He was practically an older brother to me. And you bear such a striking resemblance to him. I couldn't help thinking that. Maybe... Hmm. Forgive me. This isn't your concern. Nonsense, sir. So long as I'm proprietor, my customers' concerns are my own. <laughs> Makes me feel a bit better to hear that. Suzuki-san, I get the sense you've endured some hardships. Enough time spent behind a bar, you can read most by their face alone. Then tell me, bartender, what do I have on my face? You were always strong, so you never learned to ask for help. And too few know when you've been hurt. That's the impression I get, anyway. I see. <laughs> I'm joking again. That's how almost every man starts seeing himself past middle age. Especially the ones with such worn and chiseled faces. <laughs> Sounds like that must apply to you, too. Uh, before I came to own this place, I also lived in a world with no room for weakness. Mm -hmm. Forget it. It's not important. Whatever you say. Let me put it like this. I was raised believing that vulnerability was the enemy of survival. I carried that dogma with me for too long. Is it the same for you, perhaps, Suzuki-san? Are you saying your outlooks changed since then? I accept help when offered now, to one degree or another, while trying to give those around me whatever help I can. And I'm content with how things are. Maybe that's what it means to have a real home. And to do more with life than just survive it. That's an admirable point of view. You've fought so many battles and loved so many people. Maybe all that's left of you are your scars. How could anyone call this a just world when men like you can't be promised a good, proud ending? <laughs> Come on. How do you know you say that to all the guys? I'm saying it to you. Saying it as someone who's found a happiness here that I worry you never could. Again and again, you've been denied peace and rest. You've been denied something as precious as your name itself. But right now, for this one moment, you have people willing to help you if you ask them to. After all the tragic mistakes, their camaraderie is what proves you're still a noble man. Hey, uh, is it just me, or are they staring at us right now? The bartender's never usually so chatty. <laughs> Wonder what they're saying. I can't simply tell you to embrace vulnerability, but try depending on them while you can. After all, you're getting up there in years. <laughs> you're almost too big to be told what to do. It's uncanny. You're so much like him, bartender. My old Aniki in another life. May I say, sir, that if the day does come when you're able to take back your name, I'd like to see you then. We'll speak frankly. Neither of us will have anything left to hide. I'll pour you a drink worthy of yourself that day. On the house. Naturally. For what it's worth, I liked this drink, too. I think I should go. Thank you for the conversation, bartender. <laughs> the pleasure was mine, friend. 
Always happy to help. Appreciate it. So long. Now you know why it's called Survive. <laughs> Names are such powerful things. All right. That's the done as well. No, no, no. Listen. It's go time. Let's go to Kamaricho. I'm not doing that again. Pocket Circuit Stadium. Took me three hours. Who actually has one again. I hope it's just a memory. Ah, Pocket Circuit. <laughs> Those little radio controlled race cars. It's a surprisingly deep hobby, competing against others on elaborate racetracks. There was a time I was the fastest pocket circuit racer in Camarocho, taking on all comers. I got to know the kids who frequented the place through racing and modding our cars together. And <laughs> I even formed a lasting friendship with a pocket circuit fighter that managed our location. Last time I saw him was back in Onomichi. Hope he's doing all right. Stop being so annoying. Let me play how I want, fighter. Hmm? But that customization you put together won't work, Kojiro-kun. Try these tires instead. They'll give you more friction on turns. Come on. Use them just once, buddy. For me? Knock it off. The tires I have are the best. They're purple. Purple's cool, but the color doesn't make it race better. Don't you want to stay on the track? No, shut up already. Fighter, you suck. Let's go find something to do at the park. Yeah, this is dumb, Yasukun. Mm. Aw, just give it a little more time. It's fun. Not again. Jeez, I can't get these kids to listen. That outfit, he must be the new pocket circuit fighter. Looks like he's having some trouble. Oh well, better clean up. Whoa! Ooh! Sorry about that. Huh. A golem tiger. Oh? You... Uh... You recognize it? Hmm. I used to race here, actually. Back with the first pocket circuit fighter. Whoa. So, my name's Muranaka. I'm a new fighter, employed by the Pocket Circuit Company themselves. I'm... Well, as far as Pocket Circuit goes, I'm Kazuma. Kazuma-kun, huh? Pleasure to meet you. So if you knew this branch's first fighter, you must go back a while. I started in the bubble era. Must have been 30 years ago now. Whoa, that would have been the first boom period. Amazing. I'd have loved to have been there to see it. Is it true how popular it was back then? I'd say so. From what I recall, it really swept the country for a time. Then one day, the Kamurocha Stadium was gone. I'm surprised to see it come back now. Ah, oh, yeah, it, it did die down for a while, but recently there's been a surge of interest. The market's swelling again. On top of that, we have a new company president. He's a pocket circuit fanatic, apparently. I'm super into it. 
He came up with a bunch of innovative new mixed media strategies to get younger school kids back into RC racing. Hmm, that sounds effective. What the hell is mixed media? So, what made you want to be a pocket circuit fighter? Everything else aside? The cars. Pocket circuit cars fascinate me. Pocket circuit's popularity was waning by the time I got into it, but I didn't care. I'd spend every afternoon customizing my rig. All of my meager allowance went toward building the best machine I could. I didn't have friends at school, but eventually, I met people through Pocket Circuit. It was like finding my place in the world. Oh, it was so much fun in those days. I get it. That made you want to become a fighter. Yup. It was the fighter at my local branch who approached me when he saw that I would race alone. He helped bring me together with the other kids. I finally made friends. All thanks to him. That's the person I want to be. Someone who can help cheer up kids up when they're going through hard times. That's a true pocket circuit fighter. I think that's the right idea. You're a good fit. Except, this job's a lot harder than I thought it'd be. When it comes to pocket circuit tech, nobody knows more than me. And I just want to pass on that knowledge. Teach kids the best customizations. Support their curiosity. But when I try, oh, I can't get through to them. The kids all seem to hate me. Maybe I'm just not cut out to be a fighter. Now that I'm 30, it might be time to move back home. <laughs> Are you laughing at me? <laughs> no. It's just that back in my day, the fighter here was in a very similar position. He and I raced together a lot. I have nothing but good memories of him. It's been a long time, but I still consider him a close friend. You really have that kind of bond? Hmm. He was a great spokesperson for the hobby, and good with kids. Still, he had his share of troubles. The company never saw him as more than a disposable part-timer. When he had 30, he had a hard time staying with it. Wow. What did he do? He decided to remain a fighter. He loved Pocket Circuit. The kids loved him. In the end, he couldn't turn away from that love. The kids loved him, huh? <sighs> Makes me jealous. If I only had a better relationship with them, I wouldn't be so conflicted. Let me ask, what do you imagine the kids there want from you? Me? Well, I'm the pocket circuit fighter. They want me to teach them the best way to race, don't they? That's an important part of it. The fighter should be someone you can consult on builds. However, do you really think that's what children are looking for? Huh? You told me about the fighter who helped you as a kid, but you didn't mention his technical expertise. Did you decide to become a fighter because he made you a faster car? Did you idolize him because he taught you which tire set takes sharp turns better? Of course not. He meant the world to me because... When I had nobody, he rescued me from my loneliness. I think you understand now. What is it the children want from their fighter? You know the answer, don't you? Kazuma-kun. You're right. This whole time, I've been mistaken. Pocket Circuit might be a technical hobby, but that's not its heart. It can't be only about winning and losing. First and foremost, it's about having fun with your fellow racers. I can't believe I looked past something so obvious. Ugh, no wonder the kids hate me. It's not too late, you know. Right. I'm gonna find those kids. This time, I won't talk about wheels. I'll talk about feels. Pocket Circuit runs on love. Good. I'm sure they'll take to that lesson. Oh, thanks so much, Kazuma-kun. Fighter away! Those kids are probably in public park tree. Maybe I'll go check on them. Maybe, but we have this. Children's park. Nothing unusual about this park, except for the manhole in the back. Underneath is an intricate sewer system. 
Some might say just another face, facet of the city. At one point, Akiyama went into hiding there. Ah, to be honest, it seemed kind of fun, huh? Maybe I should experience it myself once there, uh, once before I move into my next life. here, Kiryu. If you have time, come to Harbor Light, will you? Sure, understood. I'll be there. The Yoshida Batting Center. I went to the batting cages with Shonhi and the others in Yokohama. But nowhere else can they stop this place. Huh, now I feel like I'm like working up a sweat. This brings back memories. Maybe I'll send some balls flying for all time's sake. Hit every curveball out there in the park. Cool. That was a good hit. Baseball bats remind me of, well, Machima-san. I wonder if the older Dutch clan officers think so too. You're a Machima, a reckless man, but one who lives by his own rules. I can't tell you how many times he tried to kill me, but at the same time, I can't even count how many times he saved my life. Eh, it's one messed up guy. But despite all that, he's more suited to be a boss than I'll ever be. That's if both Majima-san and Kasuga could lend me a hand, I would feel like I could take on the world. I agree. Majima for the win. Okay, where the fuck is this? On the roof, perhaps? Still a satisfying sound. Whenever I think of baseball, Shinada comes to mind. Tatsu Shinada, a man who once made his debut in the big leagues. Fell victim to a fate that so cruel would be wrong to write it off as bad luck. But despite everything, he never lost his passion for baseball. I don't think I'm capable of dedicating my entire life to the thing like he has. Respect him for that, I envy him a little too. Though it's never too late to start trying, is it? Maybe I still have time to find my true passion. Like what baseball is to Shinada. Yes. I'm feeling great. I have to fight them to do this. Okay, I'm up. You're in for it now. Prepare yourself. Let's run. Here we go. Let's go. Wait, where did the other guys come from? Great time. Allow me. I'll show you. Let's get it done. Okay, I'm up. Then you have a winner. Alright! Hills, the practical as big as the Millennium Tower. Back when this place was still under construction, I fought the dub with a man of the very same rooftop. Ryuji Goda, the Dragon of Kansai. He was powerful, more so than anyone I've ever faced before. I'd go as far as to say that man was a monster. That's why I sometimes get this feeling that it will suddenly reappear right before my eyes, even now. Ah, that takes me back. I wonder if the kids at Morning Glory feel the same way about me too. Crush it. <laughs> the 
The scene around here hasn't changed a bit, huh? I just remember something hilarious about 10 years ago. I had an encounter with Rikia Shibakuro, captain of a small canal in Yakuza family. One time he had to pretend to be a couple to sneak into a love hotel. He caught me a guard at the time. I couldn't believe that was happening. But looking back now, it's pretty funny. Yeah. Thank you for the Rikia. Yesterday. Okay. I have multiple of them there still. And there's some here. Okay. I remember this place. A few decades ago, I knew someone who occupied this building. A penthouse, in fact. Tamaru shows king of estate. Tetsuo Tichibana, president of Tachibana Real Estate. To demonstrate his power, he caused a power outage in the city for a few seconds. I think Kamurcho and Complete Total Darkness at the time still leaves strong impressions in my memory. Tachima held so much power, but he only desired one thing. And in the end, he wish his wish was never fulfilled. This brings back memories. Tachibana, what do you make of your life? Would you say it was a good one? I don't know. Why did he rebrand Clap Sega into Gigo? They literally clean up this area. There used to be a lot of homeless camping uh, here and there, but now they are nowhere to be seen. I heard that it's the reason Kamarsh has been thriving recently. Ah, so, I personally, I didn't remind the old Kamarsh that I didn't bother keeping up appearances and hiding at the glare sites. Right. Come on. Lemarsh, huh? Can't believe this place is still kicking. Normally a guy like me wouldn't visit such an ordinary high-class boutique, but I've made a great memory here before. I once bought a Yumi a birthday present here. I never did that kind of thing before, so I was really nervous about it. And to top it all off, I got scolded right after I bought it, so I had to track down the thief to get it back. Went through hell because of that drink, but it was all worth it. Because I was able to give her something she would always wanted. I hope like Yumi was yesterday. happy with it. Ryujin Hall, known as the Divine Dragon for some. That's the studio of Master Tabori, a legend among tattoo artists. I had my back inked here, too. The first time I saw my finished back tattoo, I was so shaken up. And in a world of pain, I thought I wouldn't be able to move. I hope Master Tabori is doing well. I wonder what he would say if he saw me now. What do you think I'm living up to this tattoo? Honestly, I'm both tempted and terrified to find out. Okay, looks like we have another group of enemies we need to deal with first. Unfortunately. Let's do it. Let's get it done. Let's just use this. I'll take you on. Okay, I'm up. It's time. Here we go. Hmm. I don't want to stick around here for too long because this is the same place where Haruka got in an accident. I understand what people mean now when they say your mind goes blank. I never want to recall that incident, but I can't forget that anguish I felt hearing that how she sh shielded Haruka from the impact. She's always been a strong cat. Now she's stronger than ever she was, than I ever was. Right. So that's what it means to be a parent. Been so long. I think this place was a district office of some kind. Even though I spent a majority of my life in this town, it's surprising how I don't remember this building at all. 
kind of want to peek inside, but maybe it's best to leave it as a mystery. After all, the people who work here either have nothing to do with me or don't know I exist. They've got their own lives to hell I live. Strange to think that, but it seems to go show the world is a wondrous place, bigger than we could ever imagine. I remember this. If the opportunity presents itself, I look forward to the day I get to see what's inside. Hmm. To anyone else, this is just another completely ordinary and desolate back alley, but it means something special to me. After all, this is where I had ended out with Daigo. Back then, he was just another good for nothing punk. I think that the same guy who have climbed the, climbed the ranks and become the chairman of the Tojo clan and later lead a great dissolution for the sake of the Yakuza. It's really come a long way, ah, and his strength is still bad. needed today. This is no time for you to waste away, Daigo. It's been so long as well. Kushu number one star. In the past, the food here tasted so disgusting I thought it was strange they didn't go out of business. I think it was actually in front of an underground casino. It was really something. And now it's a decent ramen shop. I guess when people come in and put their minds to it, they actually really can change. Or maybe it's just taking up the sh talking up the shop, making them look good. I'll leave out the little details. I'll try to drop in a bite every once in a while. It's not it's often I get to eat good ramen at a reasonable price. I do not take it for granted. Alright. I wonder if we find a Komaki master in that back alley. I don't think I've seen him for quite some time. Or if he's still alive, like he was old back then and it was 10 years ago probably. The champion district, huh? Thinking back on it, old man Komaki used to train me here and over in West Park. West Park's been gone ever since Kamurocho Hills went up, but this place hasn't changed a bit. I swear, from kicking you while you're down to unfair matchups, even full on shotgun blasts, Komaki knew how to dish it out. His methods might have been a little unorthodox, sure, but I also learned a lot from him. It was pretty aged last time we met, too. Hope he's still doing okay. Yo! The hell you think you're doing here, Gramps? Yeah, bro, this is our territory. What, you deaf or something, huh? No, actually, I didn't. And I'm pretty sure no one else did either. The hell did you say? All right, fine then. It's beatdown time. Oh boy, you're dead meat, old timer. Sorry about it. Now hang on. I'm a nice enough guy. Tell you what, you leave your cash with us, and we'll let you go. Sound fair? Me time. What a guy. I don't have time for this. Hold it. You fucking with us? And after I was all generous and shit? And shit is a good way to describe it. Man, shut up! All right, fine. Guess we'll just kill you then. The battle is on. Let's get I'll it assist you. How the fuck did that happen? Allow me. Times. That mouth of yours is trouble. Better learn to shut it, or the next guy might not be so nice. We're so sorry! <laughs> well, aren't you a sight? No doubt you fought your share of battles. Hmm? That voice. Old man Kamaki in the flesh. Huh? Wait, no. 
Are you? Hey, uh, nice to meet you. Forgive me, but have we met? Hmm. I see. Live long enough, and you're bound to have a secret or two. <laughs> Sorry. It seems I was mistaken. <laughs> Just, well, you look very similar to an old pupil of mine. But that was long ago, of course. Hmm, is that right? The name's Sotaro Komaki, master of the Komaki school. I teach martial arts here in town, and have for quite some time. So, you new here? <laughs> Come out this way on a trip or something? Oh, no, just here running an errand. I'll be leaving soon. Ah. Then, while I have you, any interest in becoming my pupil? Fair chance you'll improve your skills 100 times over. <laughs> you know, had you asked me when I was younger, I might have taken you up on that. Unfortunately, I've got other things on my plate right now. Sorry. Sure. Can't argue there. Well then, at least give ear to the ramblings of an old man. <laughs> For years now, I've taught martial arts to anyone willing, from ambitious youth to aimless drifter. Among them was a strong, kind man with a fist to match even mine. And though he never spoke of them, his scars were selfless ones. Intriguing as he was, I considered him my number one pupil. He even went on to influence my other students as well. Perhaps it was what you might call charisma. Of all those who came and went, he was the only one who had it. Now then, much to my dismay, my pupils tell me he's already passed away. Nevertheless, I sometimes dream of giving lessons to him once more. Just as I had in West Park with all the homeless. Listen, truth is, I don't have much time left. So can I ask you a favor? There's something I'd like to do before I die. And what's that? I'd like to round things off. One final fight, a duel for the ages. Who better than my number one pupil? Oh, uh, uh, forgive me. A man that looks <laughs> like him, I mean. So how about it? Help an old man out? All right, let's go. I can do that. I may not be your pupil, but I'll give it my all. <laughs> well then, I hope you don't mind if I do the same. In the name of true strength, Sotaro Komaki answers the call! Sotaro Komaki shall Show me what's down! Here we go. Allow me. <laughs> you are but a flesh thing! Allow me. Here we go. Allow me. Here we go. Allow me. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. How was that, old man? My, you are something. Really, you don't have much time. You're way tougher than anyone else out here. <laughs> it's been a good while since I got to go all out. No other pupil of mine's ever had what it takes. 
Anyhow, it seems I've nothing left to teach you. Maybe you're still mistaken, but can I tell you something? What's that? A while back, I did in fact do martial arts training, and from someone just like you. Whenever he found someone looking to get stronger, he'd always take them under his wing. This training was unique, to say the least, but his passion was unmatched. He taught me it's not just one's strength, but their will. I'm sure he's still out there holding on to those beliefs, raising others just like he raised me. Beliefs, hmm? Well, I'm sure he'd be very proud of his former student. He'd see a determination to lay it all out on the line for others, and the kindness needed to protect him. He'd say, you haven't changed a bit. But remember, those things can always be used against you. Careful, you don't let your guard down. Anyhow, with that, I think I've said all I need. I'll keep it in mind. Anyway, take care, all right? I'm glad we got to meet. Thanks again, old man. Sure. <laughs> Farewell, then, stranger. As long as these old bones hold, I'll continue devoting myself to my pupils. Perhaps someday we'll fight again, should our paths cross. Until then, keep on keeping on, hmm? <laughs> Likewise. Guess the Komaki school's got a lot of students these days. No doubt they're all learning the same lessons I did. I learned a lot from old man Komaki, and not just techniques. In fact, I'm still learning from him every day. Keep on keeping on, old man. That was a cool mission. Sick cart, short stuff. Is this limited edition? Yeah, I want one too. Hey, give it back, please. Huh? Don't be such a greedy brat. Well, you want to get hit? A premium model's wasted on some dumbass kids. I'll make this thing fly. But I spent my whole allowance on it. I don't care. Go away before I kill you. I get a little kid for plug-in circuit car, seriously? Not all don't around. Move a muscle. You scum! Huh? Is that the nerd I think it is? Nerd? No! Try Pocket Circuit Fighter! And that's Kojiro-kun's car. Hand it over. <laughs> Shit! Pocket Jerk-Off Fighter's actually lecturing me! Why don't you crawl back into whatever boomer-ass manga they cribbed your outfit from? You know we'd put a car like that to better use than some moron toddlers. Don't you want faster races at your rinky-dink stadium? Are you nuts? As if I'd let anyone who mistreats kids race on my tracks. Pocket Circuit may be competitive, but it's not the fastest who wins the day. It's whoever has the most fun. You two blockheads don't deserve Pocket Circuit. Fighter. It's not safe here. Move along, please. But Fighter. Don't worry about me. Now go. Okay. Now, just you and me. Right. Listen up. You're dealing with the pocket circuit fighter now. <laughs> uh, cheap shot. So, that's how it is. <laughs> hey, this nerd's literally as weak as he looks. <laughs> Look at you in that oversized chip bag. This fighter can suck my ass! For real? What kind of virgin devotes his whole life to toy cars? 
Have your folks seen your dumb cosplay? <laughs> Go home! If your family ain't disowned you yet, maybe they can find you a real job, fighter! Kojiro-kun's car handed over. Shut the fuck up! Damn it! My race isn't run yet. <laughs> Bruh, he's actually out cold. Let's teabag him. Hey. Huh? Ah! The, the hell? Who are you? Nobody besides a pocket circuit fan. You've both made a big mistake just now. Now be quiet and give me the card. What's up with him? You got some death wish, old man? Should we find out? Hell yeah, we should! Let's fuck this guy up! Alright, well, let's beat the shit out of them. The battle is on! Let's get it! I'll done. assist you! <laughs> okay, I'm up. Now you're back! Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> That should do it. Hmm? Fighter, please say something. Uh, is that you, Kojiro Kun? Yes, it's me. Are you okay? Fighter! Yeah, I'll be all right. Are any of you hurt? Uh-uh. All because you protected us. Thanks so much. Fighter, you're so strong. We never knew. Huh? What? Me? Well, look. Those bullies are all knocked out. Oh. Was that... Me? There's nobody else around. You're the coolest fighter. Um, I'm really happy you got my car back. Don't worry about it. It's a fighter's job to keep the racer safe. Fighter, you... you did all of this for us. After I said such mean stuff to you. I swear, I'm so sorry. It's okay. I promise, Kojiro-kun. I'm the one who's sorry. You only wanted to have fun customizing your kit. I tried to force my way of doing things onto you, but... You never asked me to. I assumed you'd be happier if you won more often, but you were smart enough to know what matters to you. I was a crummy fighter. I forgot the most important thing about Pocket Circuit. Please, forgive me. Fighter! Hey, I know how to make it all okay. Let's race together. Yeah, let's go, let's go. Take us back to the stadium, fighter. Ah, oh, yeah, of course. Um, I might need to buy a couple bandages first. Can you two go on ahead? Sure. <laughs> we'll wait for you there. Well done, fighter. You've really earned that title. Murinaka-kun! Hmm? Uh, President! Huh. No way. Of course. Fighter said the new president was a fanatic. I got a call on my pocket phone that a fighter was in a scuffle and rushed over. Are you all right? Oh, yeah. I'm just fine, sir. And no harm came to the children. I see. Well, thank goodness. You did the right thing protecting them, Murinaka-kun. Huh. <laughs> Any fighter worth their stripes would do the same. Murinaka-kun? Something's different about you. Have you found some new motivation? Do you think so? Kazuma-kun's to thank then, probably. Kazuma-kun? Yes, sir. He's a truly noble man and a racer since the bubble era. I was beginning to doubt my value as a fighter. To be honest, Kazuma-kun heard me out and gave me advice fit for a sage. He opened my eyes, sir. How about that? 
Kazuma kun. You say he helped you through a personal crisis? Yes, absolutely. May I ask? Uh, it sounds like you might know him, sir? Hmm. He happens to be an, uh, an important old friend. Oh, I should have realized. Kazuma kun mentioned knowing the first fighter. He called you a friend, too. He did, did he? If it's all right, sir, I should get back to the stadium. The kids are waiting for me. Hmm. Take care of yourself. Oh, Muranaka-kun. If you happen to see Kazuma-kun again, give him a message. I would love another race someday, friend. You got it, sir. I won't forget. See you again, Mr. President. You called me your friend, huh? Pocket Circuit sure is special, Kazuma-kun. If we, uh, if I ever see you again, let's laugh together. Let's cry, let's shout. Just like the kids do. Like we used to back then. Let's race, Kazuma-kun. All right. Now let's go back to survive and do one more storyline from someone. Oh, let's go Psycho. Not Psycho, whatever her name is. Hey, Sonny. Sonny, yeah. Here you, son. Came here for a drink, did you? They say booze is the best medicine. <laughs> I don't need to hear your excuses. What you drink is none of my business, after all. I won't comment. Appreciate it. Mind if I sit here? Not at all. Ah, oh, still, I can hardly believe it. The Kazuma Kiryu comes wandering in and sits next to me for a drink. How surreal. It's not that big a deal. I'm just a middle-aged man with graying hair. But you, you're not just the head of the Komi Jewel. You took command of the Yokohama Liumang as well. And all your subordinates have entrusted you with their lives. It must be a heavy burden to bear. Huh. You flatter me. That was a burden I've abandoned. Oh yeah, right. That. About 20 years ago, you retired right after becoming the fourth chairman of the Tojo clan. Had you not, I wonder if the Tojo clan would have turned out any differently. Hmm, who can say? But the Tojo clan would have disbanded regardless. The times have changed. And I doubt I'd be able to do a single thing about it. Not by myself. If anything, were I still at the top, the Tojo clan might have disbanded much sooner. I didn't have it in me to lead. Do you really think so? Because the way I see it, you just dislike being part of the herd. You don't mince words, do you? Oh, I meant no disrespect. It's fine. I wasn't offended. It was actually quite refreshing. Only the head of an organization could speak so bluntly. So long as the underworld abides by its own laws, being the head doesn't mean much. And if someone gets any bright ideas, then all I have to do is stare them down. That's basically everything in the job description. Easy, right? Easy for you, sure, I'm sure. I'm sure it must be easy for you. You're something else. Thanks to you, Ijincha's still standing even after facing pressure from Ryo Aoki. Wow. You really think so? Uh, um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm honored, but flattery won't get you anywhere. I'm not one to pay lip service. I'm completely serious. So, does that mean I'm doing alright? At least in your eyes? Yeah, for what it's worth. 
I think you're doing just fine. You good on time? Oh, there's no way I'm calling it quits when you're still drinking, Kirusan. I'll hang on for as long as I can. Do you always go this hard? Your subordinates must have a tough time keeping up. <laughs> Power harassment is a prominent concern in the underground these days. I never force a subordinate to drink. I won't deny that there's merit in ruling by fear, but you won't last for long with that alone. That all makes sense. It's becoming more and more apparent that you're a natural-born leader. That reminds me, does Komijo still monitor the whole town? All the information you've extracted is the source of Komijo's power, am I right? Right, but it's not like I keep track of every little detail. One of my rules is that my confidant only brings me crucial information. And by confidant, you mean Jungi Han? Of course. He's a very capable man, and one of unwavering loyalty at that. I'd say he's the perfect right-hand man, if only he weren't so snarky. <laughs> But there are others I consider my confidants. Some are even from my father's generation. Hmm. Your father's generation, huh? Must be close to my age, then. You're right. The elders of the organization are like my great and wise uncles. Every now and then, I'll get an earful from them. So even you have something you're afraid of. They were part of the Jingon Mafia before Komi Jewel. Back in their prime? They had a healthy rivalry with the Tojo clan. Probably a little before you made a name for yourself. I've heard a lot about your heroics. So having someone like you sit right next to me is sort of unnerving. What was that? Oh, um, it's nothing. Forget I said anything. The former Jingon Mafia. I hope they don't disapprove of you siding with me. Well, I'm not sure myself how they feel about all this, but even if they do disapprove, I can take care of it. I wouldn't worry about those old gents. After all, what I say goes. I'll meet with your elders. I'll meet with your elders and speak to them if need be. I wouldn't want you to get in any trouble. Shoo. <laughs> Please don't. That would actually be a bit embarrassing. Let me handle any problems that crop up while you're in town. After all, you are my special guest. All right. Thanks, Sunhee. Glad to have you on my side. Ijincho has been a little too quiet lately. I was honestly hoping for some excitement. Now, with you in town, things are bound to get interesting. Hold on. Are you expecting something dangerous to happen? Not necessarily. A toast, Kiryu-san? Let me welcome you to my town once more. Of course. Welcome to Ijincho, Kazuma Kiryu. Cheers. Cheers. Oh. <laughs> Looks like someone's enjoying herself. Oh, was that the impression you got? It was indeed. Well, just between you and me, I was a nervous wreck. I mean, he's the dragon of Dojima. A living, breathing legend. Leagues above me in the underworld. I can't afford to look stupid in front of Kiryu-san, especially as a representative of Ijincho. <gasps> Did I say anything weird to him? Not as far as I know. All right. I won't dwell on it if you say so. <laughs> and I do say so. Imagine me drinking with the Kazuma Kiryu. Just the two of us. Guess I'm not doing too bad. Hey, Sonny. Is this seat open? Huh? Oh, uh, yeah, of course. As you can see. Something the matter? You look a little down. Oh, pff, don't mind me. It's nothing you need to be concerned about, Kiryu-san. All right. I'll just wait until you feel like talking about the thing I shouldn't be concerned about. Don't mind me. <sighs> so that's how we're doing this? There's no winning with you, is there? I see. So your officers, these great and wise uncles of yours, are acting suspiciously whenever you're not looking. Yeah, basically. A lot of people in Komi Jewel, the younger members in particular, have been complaining to me. 
saying they don't know what to do. The elders put up a front when I'm around, but when something goes sideways, they take it out on their younger subordinates. Unbelievable. If they have a problem with how I run things, then they should say it to my face. It's hard having to deal with subordinates who are older than you or who may even have more experience. Seems like the Queen of Comijul has some troubles of her own. It, it, it's a minor issue and a personal one at that. It's really nothing you should be concerned about. Those officers are around my age, aren't they? I could lend you a hand if you need it. Oh, no, 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 please don't. <laughs> I am not saying another word so I can at least preserve what's left of my people's dignity. Our team now, no need to do things alone. We're on the same team now, so there's no need to go about things alone. Just how long are you going to treat me as a guest? Uh, well, for as long as I'm the face of this town. But I'm happy you consider us allies. No, oh, happy is an understatement. I am over the damn moon right now. Hmm? What was that? I didn't catch that last bit. Oh, nothing. I was just saying that it's the thought that counts. Not only are you my guest, but you know, you're also sick. You should put your health first and foremost. Mm, went straight for the jugular there. There once were three organizations that kept a close eye on this town. Komi Jewel, the Leo Mong, and the Seiryu clan. While it may have looked like a three-way power struggle on the surface, it was actually intended to prevent outside forces from entering. Compared to the past, Ijincho seems a bit too relaxed nowadays. I suppose as a side effect of the ongoing peace. There's not much I can do about that. But my reputation would take a major hit if you're caught worrying. Yeah, I hear you. Guess that means there's nothing more I can say. I, <laughs> but maybe the alcohol's getting to me. Sorry, I didn't mean to come off so persistent. Don't worry about it. Perhaps I'm in no position to say this, but I prefer how Ijincho is now over how it was before. Even the Komi Jewel bunch has become quite social these days. <laughs> yeah, I guess they have. <laughs> yeah, I hear they actually started saying hi to people on the streets. I mean, some of them, of course, not all. Komi Jewel used to have this image of being a secret organization that was always out of sight. Without any rivals around, like the Tojo clan or the Omi Alliance, they're probably enjoying the peace while it lasts. I see. Oh, thanks for that, Barkeep. I prefer Ijincho the way it is now, too. Actually, that reminds me. An old regular from Komi Jewel gave me this. What is it? A mask worn by members of our organization. It's modeled after the ones used in traditional Korean performances. We would hide behind a mask whenever we had to get our hands dirty. Right. But the owner of this mask said it's been a long time since he's had to wear it. Eventually, he amicably cut ties with the organization, got married, settled down in this town. He left this mask at the bar saying he was turning over a new leaf. Looks like Komiju is going through some changes. Still, he shouldn't have given this mask away, much less to an outsider. Maybe I should tighten up operations. Can you let this one slide? Could you let this one slide? That would be a welcome wedding gift for your subordinate. Huh. Well, if you so insist, then I can make an exception this time. Spending time with you takes priority anyway. <laughs> Good to hear. I was worried he'd land in trouble just because I snitched. Hmm. These drinks taste even better when I'm with you, Kiryu-san. I was thinking the same thing. I'm supposed to be dead, so... I never thought I'd be able to enjoy a drink like this again. That's why I'm savoring every glass, because I have a friend to drink with. A friend? You consider me your friend? Of course. Unless that's a problem. Uh, oh, and... <laughs> Not at all. I'm honored. Nice. Next. Hey, Sun He. Mind if I join you? Of course I don't mind, but... How's your health, Kiryu-san? Just fine. I am limiting my intake, believe it or not. <laughs> Thanks for the concern, though. Is it really alright for you to spend so much time with us? Will your subordinates manage without you there? I'm sure they'll be okay. There are hardly any issues that require my input. If they need me to get involved, then they know how to reach me. 
But there's no need to worry about me, Kiryu-san. Your phone's ringing. So it is. Just ignore it. I'm enjoying our time together right now. Uh, but... Uh... See? Now, if it's really important, they'll call again right away. You gonna answer that? <sighs> Nothing could possibly be more important than enjoying a drink with you, Kiryu-san. I appreciate the thought, but now I'm a bit on edge here. <sighs> well, now that that's over, we can finally drink in peace. If you get another call, I want you to answer it. Sunhi, if you get another call, I want you to answer it right away. Now it's got me curious. Fine. I don't mean to put off my work that much anyway. Ah, <sighs> I suppose I have to take this then. Excuse me, Kiryu-san. Yeah, of course. What? This had better be important. <sighs> yeah, got it. Bye. Everything okay? what they want? All good. Don't worry. It's not a big deal. Just ran into a little bit of trouble. Your subordinates called you multiple times, but it turns out it's no big deal? Yeah, a apparently a fire broke out on Komi Jewel Turf. What? Look, don't get so worked up. It was just a minor fire. But I've been told it might have been deliberate. Some guys from the Liumang roaming the area, allegedly. The Liumang? But I thought they were under your command. Same as Komi Jewel. Yeah, which is why I'm having them look into the matter. Again, no need to concern yourself with this. Well, that's enough of that. Let's call it a night. I've had enough to drink. Let's call it a night. I've had enough to drink. But you haven't had anything to drink. Wait, what's wrong, Kiryu-san? If this is about the fire, it's all right. Don't worry about it. This is one of those times when a leader ought to remain calm and dignified. Staying calm is one thing. Ignoring the situation is another. It was the Liu Meng who started this fire your allies. There is no point trying to look dignified in front of me. I think you actually care about what's happening on site right now. Well, that's not quite right. I'm done here. If I drink any more, then I won't hear the end of it from Nanba. Go show your face, even for just a second. Your subordinates need you there more than I do. Fine, fine. <sighs> Once you've made up your mind, you can be as stubborn as a mule. Guess we'll call it here. All right. And hey, We'll drink again sometime, as long as you're up for it, of course. There's nothing I'd love more. Well, see you. Mm, it's tough having to lead an entire organization. Daigo really had his work cut out for him. Sunhee, what happened with that small fire? The one where the Liu Mang set fire to Komijol turf. Oh, thanks for your concern, but I'd rather talk about literally anything else. There's some dissent within Ijincho, just something I have to deal with as a leader. Just nothing you should be worried about. No can do. You shouldn't have to shoulder that burden all by yourself. Why don't you lay it on me? You mentioned before, there aren't many people who can drink with you as equals. I did say that, but... Ugh, screw it. There really is no winning with you. Honestly, I didn't want to air out our dirty laundry in front of you. Hmm, so it was arson. But nobody saw who did it. Right. All we know right now is that the culprit was fully aware they were setting fire to Komi Jewel Turf. Don't you find that a little strange? Well, how so? If I remember correctly, your subordinate didn't hesitate to tell you that the Liu Mang was behind it. But how could they call them out without an eyewitness account? So you've noticed. Impressive. Ah, uh, long story short, the accusations against the Liu Mang are false. There's no evidence pointing to the perp, so it's all bullshit. But someone managed to escalate that BS to me without having to go through any filters. That's the real problem. What do you mean? 
I'm saying the lie originated within Komi Jewel, among the top brass at that. In other words, one of the Komi Jewel officers tried to deceive you with a false report. Precisely. He probably made his underlings start the fire, then spread the rumor that the Liumang was behind it. This act of betrayal only serves to escalate tension between Komijul and the Liomong. I can't turn a blind eye to it. You're right. One wrong move and it'll lead to an all-out war between the two of them. Truth is, some people aren't too happy to see Komijul and the Liomong getting along. By deepening the division and sowing discord, they'll be able to pin the blame on me for failing to take action. That's the traitor's end goal. He wants to chase me out and seize my throne to rule Komi Jewel himself. You managed to dig all that up? Then did you find out who the traitor is? I did, actually. He got sloppy when leaking the rumor. Turns out the traitor is the eldest of Komi Jewel's officers. His name is Han Chulsa. So, that's him there, huh? One of my great and wise uncles I've talked about before. Hm. At his age, he should be thinking about retirement. Guess he wanted to make a name for himself before- By betraying you, no less. If he's the oldest, then the two of you must go way back. That's infuriating. I'm getting pissed just listening to all this. <laughs> Sounds like you're angry enough for the both of us. Thanks. I appreciate it. I only said what was on my mind. Ugh, this is such a mess. I really didn't want you to see me like this. I can't believe I just spilled everything to you. Was Han Chul's uh, dissatisfied about something? I doubt he'd plan a coup for no reason. I can't think of anything. Except for the fact that I'm younger than him and a woman. Considering he's a man who's faced countless adversities in battle, perhaps he doesn't want to end up under a leader like me. Most old men probably would think so. I've received the same report from different sources stating that Han Chul Sa is secretly rallying people to rebel. Saying crap like Sun He is capable for a woman, sure, but weak-willed, and other people are more suited to lead. So he's been working the rumor mill. I can find out anything and everything that happens in Ijin Cho. Han Chul Sa won't be able to keep up with the information warfare. But people look up to him as a legend of the past. My generation grew up listening to stories of his heroics. He once fought to the death with the Tojo clan back in its heyday. I never thought he would ever become my enemy. A man too full of pride as a man stuck in time, unable to move on. Nothing more than a relic of the past. Huh. Yeah, that old man's far too reckless for his own good. Oh, but he's older than you, Kiryu-san. Much older. You're not even in the same age group. You don't have to force yourself to say that. More importantly, what do you plan to do about him? As the head, it's up to you to decide how to deal with traitors. See, this is exactly why I didn't want to talk about this with you, Kiryu-san. Truth be told, I haven't made up my mind yet. Take your time. Take your time to think it over. I'll think of something too. Look, I'd appreciate the help. If only we could have talked about something sexier instead. True. Dealing with a traitor is not a very sexy topic. Thank you, Kiryu-san. Sharing your suspicions with someone else does help clear things up. Yeah. It certainly seems so. I'm sure you have other things to do, though. Your own problems are even more pressing than mine. I don't want to cause you any trouble, so... So? Can we just drink and talk about something stupid now? Sure. What better way is there to booze? <laughs> you really do get me. Always have. Alright. Next one. Looks like someone is on the phone. She mentioned before she was traitor in Gomijul. It's the phone call about that. Got it. Thanks for the report. I'll be there soon. You guys have to stand down. We won't come out of this unscathed. Considering we're up against Hanchul Sa. What's going on? You were just on the phone with a subordinate, right? <laughs> Sorry? I don't know what you're talking about. 
Anyway, um, I just finished my drink, so I'll be leaving now. Wait, Sunhe. It sounded like you don't have enough hands on deck. Psh. I'm the queen of Comey Jewel. I always have enough hands. Suzuki-san. It's rare for you to be stood up. I doubt I even had a chance. Do you happen to know anything about what Sunhi is dealing with right now? As much as it pains me to snitch, it seems that a hostile faction in Komi Jewel started an insurrection. An insurrection? About ten of them, all led by Han Chiyol Se, have been attacking one Liu Mong shop after another. It's likely they're aiming to start a war as quickly as they can to try and overthrow Sun He San. <sighs> Things have already escalated that far. As the queen? She needs to bring Komi Jewel under control herself before the Liu Mong retaliates. Which Liu Mong spots are they hitting up? Do you know where they are? I take it you intend on helping her? Of course. I understand how you feel. But you ought to know that Sun He San can't accept an outsider's help. Unless she demonstrates authority and resolves this situation herself, the same thing will keep happening. Please, time is of the essence. There is no way I could relax and knock back some drinks after hearing all that. That's not the only problem, by the way. I've noticed she's been trying to act tougher than usual whenever she's around you. My guess is that she wants to look more put together in front of her hero. You should be more considerate. Take her feelings into account. Now's not the time for that. Oh, right. I do have something that could come in handy. <clears throat> Wear this, and you'll look like any other Komi Jewel. Sun He San won't even bat an eye. That's genius. I owe you one, bartender. <laughs> Enough, Panchalsa. I have always thought of you as a hero. Why would you do this? <laughs> That's right. I am a hero. But should a hero be forced to spend the rest of his life under the thumb of a little girl? Only a man of brute force, undeterred by bloodshed, can rule the underworld. Not a woman like you. I'm taking what is rightfully mine. So that's Hancho, sir. Take a good look, Sunny. Don't your underlings make for a pathetic sight? They actually thought they stood a chance against me. Arrogant greenhorns. There's no soldier worth his salt within the present day Komi Jewel. I've spent my days wreaking carnage during the Tojo clan's prime. I will bring change to this pitiful organization of yours. <laughs> What's so funny? You, Hanshul Sa. <laughs> You've gone senile. Sounds like you're under the impression that you could beat me, if only by brute force. <laughs> of course I can. But I'll let this slide, as long as you get on your knees and surrender. Then swear to all of Ijincho that you're relinquishing your post as Komi Jewel's commander in chief. That's all? Anything else? Let's see. Ah, yes. Strip off your clothes when you kneel. <laughs> Imagine. The Queen of Komi Jewel surrendering while nude. Don't you know? The common man loves a good show. And you were never one who served to please. Huh. Good to hear. Huh? The proud warrior I once knew is dead to me now. And the lowly, boorish man I see here is nothing but a shell of his former self. Now I have no qualms meeting out punishment as your leader. Foolish girl. You only have a single underling left on your side. Give it up. You can't win. Shh, don't listen to him. I will win. Even if I have to fight alone. If you want to run, now's your chance. No, I cannot do that. Whatever you decide, I'll see it through to the end, Sunhee. Hmm. 
that voice. Don't pay me any mind. Huntrol Su is approaching. So please brace yourself for battle. Right. Look lively, men. It's time for a new era. Down with the queen. Take care of your sins. Show me what you got. I'm on a roll. I'll follow your lead. Let's go. <laughs> Here we go. You're going to regret this. Allow I'm me. on it. <laughs> Well, that was easy. How could I, the Han Chosu, have lost? Poor judgment, I'd say. That's just too bad for you, I mean. Age has not been kind to you, hmm? <laughs> Since you messed with the Liumong, I'll just hand you over to them so they can decide what to do with you. <laughs> Unfortunately, that means I can't guarantee your life. No, please! Wait, Sunny! I'm sorry. I was in the wrong. Where the fuck are you touching her? In the underworld, you can't play ignorant and expect to get away with it. You were the one who taught me that. Hey, you! Thanks for the help. You really saved me back there. I didn't know we had someone like you in our organization. It's an honor to be of service to the Queen. Why don't you take off your mask? My apologies, but it is more imperative to tend to the injured as soon as possible. Pardon me, ma'am, but I should go look for help. Fine. Go on ahead. Have you been drinking here ever since I left earlier? Kiryu-san, a long drinking session is no good for your health, you know? It's fine. I didn't drink that much. Then I guess I'll take this seat. So... Did the bartender lend you that Komi Jewel mask? Sorry, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Ah, oh, looks like I made you worry quite a bit. But if that's how you want it, I'll play along. Right, bartender? You got involved too, didn't you? <laughs> I'm afraid I'm just as in the dark as you are. Sure, of course you are. <laughs> Neither of you open up about your past or your secrets very easily. You two are certainly veterans in that field. How about a drink, Sunhee? Just relax. Try not to give the bartender such a hard time. You two might be the only ones alive who'd treat me like a child. Then again, perhaps that's why I'm rather fond of this bar. To good friends and good drinks. Cheers. 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 So what happened to that one trader in Komi Jewel? What was his name again? Hancholsa? You're still keeping up the act? Huh. Well, my lips are sealed. It's a Comey Jewel issue. Outsiders don't need to know. Okay, dealing with Kiryu-san is one thing, but why is the bartender smirking? That's poor customer service, you know. Look at her, giving us the cold shoulder. <laughs> yeah, she has a point. That won't fly in the service industry, bartender. <laughs> all right, all right, you two. Alright, and now the closing story. To think I'd get to share a drink with a legend like you. What do you mean? You've had plenty of drinks before. This is different. Plus, a lot of things can change over time, especially relationships. For better or worse. So, Kiryu-san... Where do you think we stand? Are you glad we met? Definitely. It goes without saying. You're both a great friend and someone I can trust. Take it from me. You don't meet many people like that. Certainly not often. 
I consider myself lucky. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear that. But I'm almost sure it's not luck. Rather, it's just who you are. You're always putting others first, so it's only natural people want to do the same for you. Being a leader myself, it's nothing short of inspiring. In light of all that, I'm glad to have met you, Kiryu-san. Yeah, likewise. Alright, do we have like... nope. No, 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 not yet. Like 10 minutes left before we have to travel back to Ejincho, I mean, uh, Hawaii. So let's do one of these stories. Um, there's one in Plash and there's one here. It's with Namba. We didn't do a Namba story yet, so I'm gonna wait with that. Let's do this instead. love how creamy they make them. Do you come here pretty often? Oh, not too often. This place is still pretty new after all. It's not like I've been coming here my whole life or anything. That right? No, well, either way, it's a good spot. Isn't it? My first time here was with Ichiban and Adachi-san and the gang. We were just checking it out. I might not have even come in if not for them. I kind of have a hard time trying new places. I see. Well, it's hard to have a bad time at your favorite spot. But you can also make new discoveries with your friends. I wouldn't have this nice latte if not for you. Yeah, that's true. The guys would drag me to all sorts of new places. Huh. I used to have a good friend who'd do the same thing. He really opened my eyes to the world. Having friends like that can make your world that much bigger. Treasure every moment. And your friend? Are they... You know what? Never mind. You're right. Every moment. Uh, I guess I derailed our cafe conversation a little bit. Sorry. No, not at all. I love learning about you, Kiryu-san. So I'm always happy to hear more. About me? Well, all right. Uh, let's go for, for a walk one day. Then let's all take a walk one day. Sitting down at a place like this is great, sure. But my favorite thing to do lately is walk around town and talk about things we've all seen and felt. Right now, it's more or less all I want to do. Guess I think it's kind of special. I've been going it alone for what seemed like forever. Honestly, I hope you guys stick around. <laughs> of course. I love walking around town with everyone, too. I hope we get to do this again sometime. Oh, I know! Why don't we take a picture? Taking pictures at fancy cafes is really trendy, you know. Sure, that's fine, but aren't you supposed to do that before you drink your latte? Oh, uh, well, let's just forget about the rules for a sec. All right, here goes. <laughs> Not exactly a masterpiece, but the memories there, right? Let's keep spending time together, whether that's talking, walking, or taking more pictures. Okay? Yeah, looking forward to it. Okay, I guess we do the number unless I can find the third quest here, because the one was during the evening, maybe once during the night. Let's just have a look if there's one more. But I think it's just this one. Yeah, okay. Then let's do Namba. It's fine.
To most people, this is just another bridge over a dirty river. It's more than that to me, though. Yeah? No, I think anything can hold sentimental value, depending on what it means to you. I've spent a lot of time just standing here, watching garbage float down river. When I do that, it's like I'm seeing time go by, and it keeps going, no matter what. It's almost telling me, don't waste your time feeling down. I have to keep looking forward. This too shall pass. It's a good lesson to learn, even from garbage, Nanba. I'm being serious here, come on. I've been all the way to Hawaii now, but this spot still means the most to me. Ichiban and I met near here, too. So, I thought it was only right to share it with you as well. <laughs> Nanba. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate what this means to you. And I'm humbled that you'd take me here. Well, nobody ever said that being my friend's a rewarding investment. At least we can afford moments like this. Oh, hey. Why don't we take a picture together? To remember today. I doubt I'm likely to forget this, but... All right, let's. <laughs> Thank you for that. You're a good friend, Kiryu-san. You too, Namba. I'm counting on you. All righty. So that's pretty much it. How are we on quests? So I didn't even check the bucket list. So yeah, this is gonna take the most of the time, the life lengths. We have five more quests. Um, we have two side missions there, one side mission here. And these are the five quests I was talking about. So three side quests and then the final battle with the Amon clan. And of course the two uh, Drinklings. I don't know if I'm gonna do those honestly. Since they take so much time. And I don't know how to paste the episodes correctly. But we also have the dungeon we have to do. So let's travel there. Maybe you need to complete them for Amon. I don't know. Maybe. Anyway. <coughs> Let's travel here. Oh, don't you fucking block my way. Okay, let's go inside first. Uh, since I want to change outfits that we just unlocked for doing the drink links. On Shionhi. What about this with those shoes? Wait, did we not unlock one? Unless it was this one that we unlocked? Oh no, we did unlock the Hawaii outfit, I think. I don't know. I'm not leaving until it's perfect. Maybe we unlocked one. Actually, we maybe might have unlocked one for Kiryu, in that case, with the mask. I don't know. Judgment. Maybe it's time I change styles. All right, then Psycho, does she have any outfit? Please tell me she does. Oh, the classic outfit and the hostess outfit. So we did get multiple ones. Hmm, 
what's in this season? Always so hard to choose. If she had a, a different hairstyle here, I would have used that, but she, sadly she does not. I'll just keep the one I have currently. Sadly. That's the best one, though. Alright, let's get outside. Uh, that's not outside. Also heal. Okay. And then we go back in. And we're going for the final floors. Dig, dig for treasure. So, the final floor. It's been a hell of a ride, but we made it. You know, for once, I actually feel like I'm not about to get killed. What's up? Yeah, same here. This place really has made us stronger as a team. Let's show how much we've grown. <laughs> Damn right, let's go. Yeah! Okay. Thank you for watching. Like always, I'll start an next stream in front of the boss fight so we don't have to do this. Either way, thank you for watching. Take care. Bye bye.